Franny, can I get you to open us with a word of prayer tonight, please? Oh, certainly. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you, Lord God, and, and study your word. Lord, we invite your precious Holy Spirit into this Bible study, Lord God, to give us revelation, knowledge, and an understanding of what you would have us to know. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. May you be high and lifted up. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay. So... Last week, we left off. Um, uh, well, let me do this first. Elaine Berger, would you get Revelation chapter 3, verses 12 and 13 ready to read, please? And whenever you're ready, just wave at me or unmute yourself or whatever you feel so inclined to do. Hey, Jamie, did I say hi to you yet? So, Okay, you're ready. Go ahead and read, if you would, please, Elaine. I am coming quickly. Uh, what did you say? What verses? 12 and 13, 3, 12 and 13. Okay. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he will not go out from it anymore. And I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God and my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Okay, thank you. So last week we left off um, with uh, question 17, um, number three, I think it was. But before we uh, get there, I just, uh, just to kind of get the... Uh, plane running down a taxiway um we talked about what four rewards and i did not the what's in the brackets there was not in the notes originally but it probably should have been for clarity but what four rewards in addition to being a pillar are the ba are the balance of verse 12 are in the balance balance of verse 12 and what does each mean and we talked about um we will not go out from it anymore which declares those who overcome will forever be in the presence of God. And we did a little rejoicing over that idea. Um, <clears throat> in the, and I mentioned to you about the uh, old song in the chorus of, uh, uh, of the song called Beautiful Savior. The final stanza, stanza says, I long to be where the praise is never ending, yearn to dwell where the glory never fades with where countless worshipers will share one song and cries of worthy will honor the lamb. And, uh, any, anybody else looking forward to that? You know, I, I certainly am, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be marvelous, but so, uh, that brought us on to the name of God written upon him. And we talked about how that speaks of God's ownership and possession. Thus, an assurance of his provision and protection. God takes care of what is his. And if his name is written on us, then that means we are his. And um, he will protect us. He'll watch out for us. And he's doing that today, whether we see it or not, whether we perceive it or not, whether it feels like it or not. Um, I don't know about you, but there are days where I don't feel like God is protecting me, but he is. And he always has a purpose. He causes all things to work together for our good and his glory. And uh, uh, he has reasons for all of it. So, And far too many today are mm -hmm. expecting, claiming, and errantly believing for, quote, unquote. And those are phrases that are often used. God's provision and protection when they are unwilling to yield uh unwilling to acknowledge and yield to his ownership and possession. You can't be assured of God's protection unless you are assured of his possession of you. Okay. And um, doesn't mean we have to be perfect. Uh, ain't nobody perfect, but the Lord. Um, and I'm a, a, a great visual aid to that truth. Um, so, uh, that, that brings us then to the, what is the third, um, what was the thing, that, what, how did I call it? The, the third 
reward that is listed there uh, in that passage. Sorry, I need to get my notes back here. Where did they go? Oh, there they are. Okay. What's the third reward that's listed there? Anybody? Ron? Um, the name of the whole, um, not only is he going to write your name, but the name of the city of, of my God. Okay. Yeah, the name of the city of our God will be written upon us. And what does that mean? What's that referring to? Honestly, I'm not sure. Okay. Anybody? Is that kind of like when you write your name on a toy so you know it always comes home with you? <laughs> Ownership? Ownership? Okay. I think that goes back to the other, yeah. Um, but I think that has more to do with his name written being on us as opposed to the name okay. of the city. Norma, oh, what are you saying? City. Huh. What do you think that speaks of, Norma? Um, could it be the new... New Jerusalem. He is speaking of the New Jerusalem is the name of his city. Yeah. And so you're absolutely right there. But what does that name being written on us speak to, Kathy? Well, <clears throat> just looking at the um, commentary, it says, as the high priest had on his breastplate, the names of the 12 tribes were engraved, and these constituted the city or church of God. So it says Christ here promises that in place of them, the 12 apostles representing the Christian church shall be written, which is called the new Jerusalem and which God has adopted in, in place of the 12 tribes. The 12 what does that Jewish mean in tribes. your own language? You know, that, that, um, that it's, it's not, it's not just the 12 tribes. They are now included into that just like the 12 names were written on that breastplate, which proves that, you know, who they were. Okay. You know, now their names are also written on that. Okay. Ron. Okay. This is going to be a weird analogy, but is it like a backstage pass? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It gets you access to areas where not everybody's going to get to go. Right. I, I think that's actually a, a pretty good analogy. Of backstage. <laughs> yeah. I've never had a backstage pass, but yeah, I guess that gives you access to things that others wouldn't have access to. Right. Yeah. That's great. I mean, they get to see the band members, you know, yeah, yeah. that that's, I think that's a good analogy. Dale, what were you going to say? Uh, I, I would say it, we are now members of, of the, the family. We are sons and daughters that, you know, uh, it's not only that uh, ownership could be um, uh, a mule, a s slave, you know, yeah. or whatever. But yeah. what what it is, it's 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 like you know he's in, in the prodigal side. He put the ring on his finger, and mm -hmm. you know, and, and those type of things. It's it's not only yeah. It's it's we we are of of his family. Part of his family. Okay, that's good. Somebody else. Any, anybody else have a thought? Jamie, you're muted. Um, there you go. It, I thought it was another reference to us being grafted in because originally everything was about the Jewish people. Okay. And that we're right in there now too. Okay. And I think that lines up with what Kathy was saying, um, mm -hmm. you know, certainly because she was talking about the breastplate and now the apostles are part of that as well. Somebody else? Mike, were you going to say something? Uh, I was. Um, yeah, there are no pillars of stone in, in in the heavenly city. There's no the temples are the people. The the pillars are the faithful people of God who glorify God. Okay. That's who it is. The pillars are the faithful who proclaim God, faithful to God. Okay. Anybody else? Thoughts? Okay. I Elaine, were you gonna say something? Look like you took a breath to speak. <laughs> no, okay, um, yeah, I, I, I think all of that is great, and it all fits in with with the answers that I have here. It speaks of the citizenship in the kingdom of God, but this here's something that we need to recognize: not just future, but here and now. We are citizens of the kingdom here and now, and then we will be 
in the new Jerusalem. But uh, we are citizens now as well as then. Mm -hmm. uh, the name uh, is specifically identified as the new Jerusalem, which, which uh, Norma spoke to just a moment ago, which solidifies this as being for eternity. And you could just consider the, the description of the new Jerusalem in chapter 21, and I don't want to jump ahead that far, but we'll get there when we, when we get to chapter 21, talking about the new Jerusalem. So the name of the city of his God, the new Jerusalem is written on us. It's there now. We are members of that kingdom now. We are uh, occupants of that um, family, as somebody else used the term. So what's the, the fourth reward that's listed there? What's the fourth one listed there? Anybody? Is it before or after? Before or after what? You know, the city of my God. I'm going to say it's after, but let me open the text to see. <clears throat> Yes, it's after the city. It's after the new Jerusalem. Okay. Isn't it my name? My new name? New my name? new name. Yeah, my new name. And what what does my new name speak of? Dale. Uh, Co-ownership uh, of, of Christ. Co-ownership of Christ? Elaborate. Co-ownership with, with, with Christ. With you Christ. Know, Christ has, has bought us with the price, you know, he, he paid on, on the cross. Which, but it's not only ownership, it's, well, it, it, it is ownership because, you know, uh, uh, We're gonna roll yeah, that's, yeah. Okay. Somebody else? Other thoughts here? I think, um, I, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about, I, I think at that time, the Lord is going to um, have a new name, just like he's known as like El Shaddai, Jehovah Rapha. I think at this point in time, this is what makes me think at this point in time, he is going to have a new name. We are going to know him by another name. New now, name. we don't know this name now, ah. but then, you know, he will, he will have a new name because I think in the, in the scriptures, Jesus talks about, you know, having a, a, a new name, you know, in, in these times like this. So that's just my thought. It's a new name. We don't know this name now, but when all these things occur yeah. and he takes, you know, that ownership of us, we're going to know him as, you know. This new name. That's an interesting that's insight, Granny. I hadn't, hadn't considered that. Um, I mean, he is still the same God, right. but as you pointed to, he's known as Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Jireh. Uh, Those yeah, are the names well, that are assigned yeah, there's to him. So many yeah. Meanings. yeah, there's a number of them. And so that's, that's, that's an interesting consideration. So anybody else, what does it mean that he will write his new name? Uh, that, that, um... Other thoughts here? Jamie, you're awful quiet tonight. <laughs> well, no, I only had three. Oh, you only had three. I came okay. up with three, but I'm pondering the my new name. Okay. Um, I don't know. He's going to be the supreme ruler of everything. So I would think they would have something to do with that or that we'll come to truly understand his position. Okay. But, Right now, we think we do, <laughs> but to see it up live and close, like yeah. I can't even imagine, like, wow, you know? Yeah. Anybody else? Other thoughts? Well, it, and interestingly enough, Jamie, I think the first piece of what you said is, is kind of encapsulated in this. It speaks of the completion of our transformation into the image of God's son, as promised in Romans 8, 29. We'll have his new name on us because we will then be 
um, as Romans 8, 29 declares, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son so that he, Jesus, would be the firstborn among many, many brethren, many brothers and sisters. <laughs> so at that point, we will be just like Jesus. How marvelous is that? The transformation will be complete. Anybody else get excited about that? Any, anybody else see that there? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that the transformation will be complete because um, uh, the, the, the end has come. And so that new name is written on us. And uh, uh, Jamie, you're, you're smiling. Something's, something's Well, you know, it just occurred to me that part of the transformation process will be to see the big picture as he does and yeah. how all the pieces that didn't make any sense to us yeah well it's um a little bit overwhelming yeah. to comprehend that like can you imagine yeah yeah no i can't but i know what you're talking about like uh, oftentimes you know people talk about well it says there's going to be no more tears no more sorrow no more sadness but what about the loved ones that we don't see there what what right. about those that don't make it and from this perspective from this earthly human perspective there's always going to be pain associated with that but as as you could communicated jamie maybe indirectly and unintentionally but we'll see everything from his perspective mm -hmm. we will understand then why there are those who to god's regret uh, and that's over anthropomorphizing and making them too human but to god's regret maybe not to god's regret there will be those who will be in in, in eternal suffering but, not but only, we'll understand why you can even take a step for, why did a little child get cancer why did yeah. this mother lose her son you know you yeah. know the list goes on why was there a shooting at a school yeah that's yeah supposed to make people, like yeah we look at it from the earthly perspective, like right. what right. possible purpose could this serve, you know? Yeah, yeah. Franny, were you going to say something? Yeah, I was, um, I was thinking about what you said, and I was trying to remember we're in Revelation, but it talks about where the Lord is going to wipe the tears from our eyes. Yeah. Because, you know, heaven is going to be a, a place of utter joy. There's not <laughs> going to be any sadness there. There's not... Right. And so he's going to take that away from us, or we would be miserable and unhappy, even in yep. heaven, thinking about those that got left behind, you know, yeah. people that we love. So that's why he's going to have to wipe the tears from our eyes. Yeah. And those two verses for anyone that's looking for them are Revelation 7, 17, for it says, okay. for the lamb in the center of the throne will be their shepherd and will guide them to springs of the water of life and god will wipe away every tear yeah. uh from their eyes and mm -hmm. uh the the other one is chapter 21 verse 4 where he says oh, he yeah. will and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes there will no longer be any death there will no longer be any mourning or crying or pain the first things have passed away man oh man mm -hmm. i you know i don't know about the rest of you but i i'm i'm looking forward to that day for sure and for certain so okay anybody else other thoughts dale um in in revelation uh 19 uh verses 11 through 13 in 11 it says uh and he saw the heavens open and behold on he was on a white horse and he sat upon him and was called faithful true and, and righteous but then in uh 13 and he was clothed with a vesper dipped in blood and his name was called the word of god okay mm -hmm. okay so that speaks of you know at, at that point in time he will be known as as the the, the word of god although Carrying he's known out. as that now isn't he the completion of the, of the word. okay okay you know, and, yep. and because now we see the truth you know uh we we heard of the truth Okay. And, and by faith, we accept it's going to happen. And now it's the completion uh, of the okay. truth. So it will be known as. You know, yeah. And, and uh, may I just come at it from a little different perspective, because yeah. he, he already is that 
True. Yes. Mm-hmm. But, yes. But we will. But we will fully grasp his being the word of God. Yes. You know, and uh, so, but that's good stuff. Good stuff. Anybody else? Anything else before we hit question eighteen? Yeah, I'm just going to say there. When I was little, uh huh. Whenever I write about there be no tears, you know, I just figured that it was almost like he would give us amnesia towards the end. <laughs> like, it, you know, like he would touch you and the people that didn't make it, maybe they would be erased from your memory. Because I even had an argument with someone who's not saved in my family. Tell him like, well, don't worry that, you know, their, their thing was, oh, don't, worry, don't worry, you'll be saved. I'm like, but how will I be happy in heaven if you're not there with me? Like, mm. I, don't you want to see me happy? Like, you need to get it together. It was a very, <laughs> it was a very bad argument, very weak. I'm first to admit that. Um, but I thought about that a lot. Like, how can I be happy in heaven until like we really started delving into this? knowing that we'll see things as Christ does. Yeah. yeah. So it made me feel a little bit better about dying if this person doesn't get their spiritual life in check. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, and, and remember that he loves them more than you do. Shirley, you were going to say something. Yes, I, I don't know if this goes with the four or the one where is this, I will write on him my new name. I was going to uh, Revelation 22, 4. They shall see his face and his name shall be on their foreheads. Mm. And uh, what I wrote was, um, it will show who we belong to. And we will have the privilege to really know Jesus. We know him through, his, through the word, but we will be privileged to really know him when we see him, when we are glorified with him. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Mm-hmm. And when you read that, it, you uh, something you said there about face to face. I'm reminded of the um, passage in Hebrews, I believe it is, where it says, um, uh, but it, no, it's first Corinthians. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, in first Corinthians, where he says, uh, in he says, for we now we see in first Corinthians 13 verse 12 it says for now we see in a mirror dimly but then face to face now we know in part but then we will know fully just also as we have been fully known uh and just before that it says in verse 9 it says for we know in part we prophesy in part uh but when the perfect comes the partial will be done away with um uh, when I was a child, I used to speak like a child and think like a child, reason like a child. But when I became a man, I did away with childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly and then face to face. I know in part now, but then we will know. So there it is right there. You know, it will, it'll all make sense. You know, have you ever been in a, in a, in a circumstance, a situation here in just life where, Somebody maybe above you or in a different position than you, a greater position of authority than you acts on a, in a particular way. And it just doesn't make sense to you. But then when you learn everything that was behind it, it all clicks and it all makes sense. It's going to be that in spades, you know, when we get the when we get the glory. So, OK, last question. Question 18 here is why is verse 13? and encouragement as well as an admonition. And of course, oh, wait a minute, I'm, I'm in the wrong, I'm in First Corinthians. Anybody, why is verse 13 an encouragement as well as an admonition? Where he says, the one who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says that a church is Mike. Uh, you have the opportunity to turn. And if you were not listening to the Lord, you have, a t- uh, you have the opportunity to change your way and listen to the Lord. Okay. Okay. And, and get with the program. Okay. So. Okay. Somebody else? Kathy? I, I was just thinking that, um, that the Spirit is still speaking. <laughs> 
you know, that's an encouraging thing, you know, that he hasn't, he's not silent. He's not silent. Okay, Jamie. It's what we all want to hear that praise and the encouragement, but it's up to us. We have to hold on tight to Jesus and the word and follow the Holy Spirit. Okay. And I think that's what he's saying there. I, I think that's the, the admonition side of it for sure, for sure, Jamie. And that's the, the encouragement is that all of the promises made to Philadelphia apply to anyone who hears and heeds. The encouragement is all of the promises to Philadelphia apply. The admonition is hear and heed. <laughs> you know, if we hear and heed, if we listen and, he and heed, and heeding um, confirms a, a listening to the hearing. You can hear something and not listen. Um, there are several couples in this room, and uh, others of you have had spouses, um, and you have family around you. Um, those who with whom you are in close relationship, have you ever heard someone? but not listened. And everybody said, amen. amen. At least the husbands <laughs> in the room need to be sure that we acknowledge that. Um, oh, the wives know, too. We would be why Oh, the wives too. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jamie, for, <laughs> for, for bringing that little uh, it's a truth. peace offering to the room. Yeah. And you're right. And the reality of it is we all do that. Don't we? Mm -hmm. We all hear but oftentimes we hear what we want to hear instead of what's being said. And mm -hmm. that's proven by the fact that we don't heed. And so the, the admonition side of this encouraging uh, verse here in verse 13 is that we, we need to hear and heed. So we need to listen and then apply the things that he shows us. So, so that, that wraps up this particular set of notes. <laughs> and um, so what I want to do is uh, Kathy, who is my, my AV expert, um, my audio visual expert, she always brings in some wonderful things to share with us to augment these studies. You know, anybody who has been here when Kathy does a study, you know, uh, I'm the, 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 the chalkboard whiteboard guy. I list all of the details and the facts, subsets and, you know, points and sub points and <coughs> sub sub points. Kathy gives you flowery pictures and nice little music, you know, so because that's the way she views things. That's good. We balance one another. So she found this really wonderful. Oh, I don't know if I shared the sound. I can fix that. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Hang on just a minute. OK, there we go. I think that should fix it. Nope. All right. I think we, we should be good now. Let me just double check. Yes. Okay. So I want to share this video with you. It's, I watched it today. It's wonderful. Um, he addresses and gives answers to some of the questions that we will begin to study next week. It's going to be next week before we get there because this video is over 25 minutes long. But it's worth it. it it's not, uh, you know, I, I think you'll enjoy it. So uh, without any further ado. Okay. We've got five minutes here. Uh, any just quick, don't dig in anything yet because we're going to get the to the text and we'll look at notes. Um, I think everybody has those notes, but um, any anything in particular that struck you there, Joyce? I loved how when he talked about those three things that they were known for, banking and uh, the ISA, it was the three things he addresses of what is was wrong with them, and yeah. then he gave them the solution for it. Yeah. In in what we'll be studying. Yeah, that's good, Elaine. 
Um, I like the a analogy that he did with the prisoners uh -huh. uh, versus the uh, uh, higher ups, the uh, governor, the Supreme Court justice, uh, and the uh, the eagerness with which the prisoners wanted to serve God, yeah. as opposed to people of wealth or whatever. Yeah. 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 When when he was talking about that, I remembered. Uh, one time when one of the times when I was in Africa, I was only I've only been there twice and I'm not this great world traveler, but I went twice because God made the way and told me to go. And I went. But Jim, I'll your never... your sound went down, hon. My sound went down. Can you? Oh, it's because I moved my microphone. There Is that go. better? Yeah, much. Okay. Mm -hmm. There was there was one night it was my turn to preach and I, I'll never forget it as long as I live. Here we were in this. I. I it was a nothing room. I mean, just a room with wooden boards uh, on stumps, if I remember right. It was all these pastors from Africa. Some of them had walked two days to get there. And here I was given the privilege to preach to these guys. And I really felt like the Lord was in it. And man, what a marvelous. I, I don't think I've had a single preaching experience that is dear to me as that one was. I, I, I just only pray that what I said had a benefit to somebody that was there, but uh, only eternity will say for sure. Anybody else? Other thoughts? Yeah, Franny. You have to unmute, Franny. If you just hold your space bar down, that'll work. Sorry. If you click okay, the there you okay. go. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say the first thing I noticed when we were talking about one of the promises he gave that you would be a pillar in the temple. And it was the first thing that stood out to me. The city had been destroyed by um, an earthquake. Yeah. And you had all the rubble around, but you saw all the pillows. All pillars, yeah. Uh, pillars, yeah, that were standing. And yeah. so that just grabbed me right away. Yeah, that struck me too. And mm -hmm. the one, the ones that got me were the pillars with the the piece precariously positioned on the top. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm thinking I would be nervous, but then again, it's been there for a thousand years. I thousand think it'll last years. another two days. You know, yeah. so somebody else, something that struck you here, mm -hmm. Jamie. Go ahead. You, yeah, you got to unmute, Jane. I muted everybody when we went in, so that. <laughs> I didn't realize that. I'm sorry. Yep. No, no. Uh, I liked it when he said, do you love God, the giver, or the gifts he gives more? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we're very blessed in this country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Yep. And, and how many people in modern day Christianity in the church have focused on the gifts instead of the giver? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I like that, yeah. too. Anybody else? Well, two other quick things that I, that I kind of grabbed me was when he made the, and this is a paraphrase of what he said, but almighty God gently and humbly comes and knocks on our door asking for permission to come in. Mm -hmm. And if we deny, if we refuse him entrance, he's not going to force his way in. And um, the other thing that, that I really liked, and I think I'm going to adopt it, is Jesus wins. I love that letter. Jesus wins. Yeah. Jesus wins. You know, it, it, it you know, um, Jesus is coming back and he wins. We read the end of the book and he wins. We get to win with him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else before we leave out tonight? Dale, go ahead. Yeah, I was uh, when when he was saying how how China, you know, um, they they were actually uh, asking them not to pray, you know, in in, in that yeah. vein because it's like they kind of lost their momentum, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. And then I, I'm uh, reminded of the the uh, parable of the the tares, you know. It's like um, uh, to where it's like, and and even, you know, we're, we're um, the the church. Is, is strengthened in, in those times of, of uh, persecution. Yeah. You know, so yeah. even, you know, 
God is even uh, glorified in, in, uh, in, in persecution. Absolutely. Elaine, what were you going to say? Um, I don't know if you remember the War Room, that movie. Yeah. Uh, and they were having coffee, and she gives to Liz lukewarm coffee, and she just about chokes on it. And that analogy was brought up in the uh, the water. They yeah. you what they wanted to spit it up because it yeah. was nasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll talk about that more when we get into the notes. But yeah, for sure. All right. Well, it's been Kathy. Did you have your hand up? I, I did, but I, I was just saying that I, I love that that the, the between the prisoners and the uh and the, and all the uppity ups, if you want to say. And I just remember, like you said, whenever Jesus said, you know, which one loves me more, and he said it's the one that sinned, you know, and that just sort of brought that to my brought it really real, you know. Yeah, so yeah. kind of kind of choked me up. Yeah, <laughs> so. I see that. All right, hon, would you close us in prayer, please? Can you? Oh, <laughs> no, Father, we just want to thank you that you do stand at the door and knock. Mm. Father, we just pray that you would take this lesson this, and that you would just um, have us think on it this whole week. Father, help, help, just help us this week to reflect on this. Mm -hmm. We are just so thankful. Yes. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, well. Study your notes. We'll resume next week. And uh, Lord bless y'all. Have a great week. Good night. Good night.